colossal Euston Arch was built by the Victorians to celebrate the opening of London's first intercity railway terminal. But in what has been described as one of the worst acts of architectural vandalism this country has ever seen, it was torn down in the 1960s to make way for a modernised Euston station. Now though, plans to rebuild the largest Doric arch ever constructed in Britain have moved a step closer as architectural historian Dan Cruikshank reports. The Euston station we know today bears little resemblance to its rather more arresting 19th century incarnation. Back then, at what is now the southern end of platform eight and nine, I'd have been standing under one of the architectural wonders of the early Victorian age, an enormous Grecian Doric arch rising 70 feet above me. That's taller than four double-decker buses topped one upon the other. As a child, I lived near the station, and I can remember how the Euston Arch dominated the entrance, a great symbol of strength and confidence. It was the arrival of the railway age at the heart of the world's greatest city. It was a big moment in the history of Britain, the history of the railways. They knew how important it was, and that's why they made the grandest, most gargantuan entrance they could devise. But then, in the early 1960s, despite vociferous protests, the arch was demolished to make way for what you see around us today. It was, to my mind and many others, one of the most wanton acts of destruction ever visited on a piece of Britain's architectural heritage. It was a very traumatic time for people who cared about the buildings of London. Great figures like John Betjeman got involved. They went to see the Prime Minister, Harold Macmillan, and they asked him personally to intervene, to give the relatively small amount of money that would have been necessary to save the arch. I think to Macmillan, the arch was a symbol of all that he was trying to get rid of. And in an age of plastic and asbestos and space travel, it was not the image that he wanted for Britain. Twenty-five years ago, I started on a mission to discover what had happened to the stones of the Euston Arch after it had been demolished, which explains why I'm standing here next to the Prescott Channel beside the River Lee in East London. It was here, back in the early 1990s, I discovered that at least some of the stonework had been dumped in this tributary of the Thames to fill a huge hole that had been formed in the riverbed. Can't make it out. Is that a flute or is it just a, it was Bruce and Doric? There you go, with the ridge in between. The, the right cable belt, mate, if you need it. Yeah, that's it. So it's all the that's, proof that's we exactly, need. That's exactly, that's great. Okay, that that's is, brilliant. That is a column from the Euston Arch. Yeah, that's a column. <laughs> Oh my God, it's brilliant, right, that's absolutely, absolutely brilliant. Look at that, it's yeah. fantastic. Right. <laughs> it couldn't be better, Aaron, could it? And then, in 2009, a further 29 stones were removed when the channel needed to be deepened to allow barges to reach the site of the Olympic Stadium in Stratford. The stones themselves are in good condition, it's wonderful, brandly full, Gritstone from Yorkshire, solid like granite. The only damage was done during the demolition process. You see here, these channels are from jackhammers, big drills used to split the stones into pieces to make demolition easier. This is one of the most dramatic stones. It's the capital of one of the, one of the corner piers that would have been high up. Uh, you see, it's very, very dramatic architecture, beautiful thing. And the only damage, again, is from the demolition process. This channel cut through here for lifting tackle. But here you can see the original surface still intact, the tooling. This has survived, you know, 130 years in the sooty atmosphere of Euston and 50 years underwater. No problem at all. It's been giving it a good bath. And my guess is that there could be as much as 60% of the Euston Arch back where these came from. And now, just over half a century later, another controversial transport plan could help to turn the clock back. The Department of Transport is working on plans to make Euston the London hub for HS2, the high-speed rail link to the north, complete with a rebuilt arch. That's uh, of the first batch of stones out of the canal. Alan Baxter is the engineer who is responsible for piecing the arch back together. 
Well, Alan, there's a wonderful photograph of the arch in about the mid-1920s, and on here we can identify some of the stones that we've already lifted, can't we, Alan? Yes. Well, I know we have one of these corners from one of the, from one of the four piers. That's right. Well, we've already got some one of these out, yeah. uh, one here, and a couple of these column pieces. Right. What we haven't yet found, of course, are any of the stones with the lettering. It'll be a great moment when we find, well, half an E, perhaps, I see the joint down the middle of it. But of course, you know, the reconstruction is going to be informed by wonderful photographs like this. They have so much information, but we have more than simply photographs. There is a wonderful set of drawings um, made in the late 1950s showing the design, construction, materials of the art in incredible detail. Look at this. They are really beautiful drawings in our own right, but they're incredibly useful technically for us putting the thing back together yeah. again. But before the arch can be put back together, the remaining stones will have to be pulled from their watery grave. The stones are retaining the wall at the lower level oh, to maintain okay. the stability of the wall. So if they weren't there, then the wall would fail. So the Houston Arch is still doing a job after oh, all yes. these years? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, how difficult would it be to get the stones out? I mean, what are the challenges? At low tide, it should be possible to identify some of the individual stones and then there'd need to be a sequence of removing those stones and replacing them with other stone material so that we maintain the stability of the river walls. It's not a huge technical challenge, is it? I mean, basically a boat with a crane. As always, the problem is time and money. And then there is the question of where the arch might go, now that its original site is part of the operational area of the station. One idea is that it should be rebuilt here, between these later lodges. That would look very effective, but it would screen the war memorial. That could be a problem. What is certain, though, is the arch will once again frame the main route of entry to the rebuilt Euston Station. But not everyone is convinced that resurrecting old monuments to the past is the right way of celebrating a modern new development. Matt Brown is editor-at-large for the website The Londonist. I think it'd be a mistake actually. I think its time has been and gone. And I think it's large and ugly and overbearing to be frank. And um, I, I'm not alone in that. It's, it was very often said in the Victorian times that this was a gloomy structure, a sepulchral structure even. One commentator even said a prison-like structure. Yes. Not the sort of welcoming structure you want <laughs> on a modern <laughs> station. Gloomy is good, sepulchral is even better. I guess we'll just have to agree to disagree. <laughs> To try to galvanise public opinion behind the idea, a few of these stones are due to be transported back to Euston for the first time since the arch was broken up. Good seal, good seal. Mm. This is a good one, is it? Yeah. yeah. We plan to take three or four of the really interesting stones down and make a sort of archaeological ruin there because when this was high grass, it looked like some amazing site in a Greek Arcadia. island. Arcadia, yes, yes, yes. And that's the romance of it, which is great. And that's what we're trying to do. So to have this as an exhibition of what there was this wonderful arch that was right. wantonly destroyed, I think the public will find it very interesting. Meanwhile, the people at the Department of Transport say they are continuing their work the Department of Transport say they are continuing their work on the new plans for Euston Station as we speak, and they will publish them in due course. Although still some way off, it feels like the writing of a great architectural wrong might just be inching that much closer. Dan Cruikshank there, and we look forward to bringing you further updates on the Euston Arch in future programmes. Hey.